Hi, my name is Greg Moore. I work for TAFE New South Wales and this small PowerPoint production is about circuit protection which is used in the electrical and electronic industry. Uh, essentially we'll be looking at the difference between RCDs, residual current devices or sometimes known as uh, earth leakage circuit breakers and uh, although the two devices have slightly different ways of functioning they both have the same outcome and that is to uh, protect human life against electrocution. Uh, we'll be looking at RCD, LCBs as opposed to circuit breakers in our building. So let's look at the first slide here. Electricity can kill. Electricity is very dangerous. Um, I think we know that. Electricity can start fires. That you may not know, uh, but electricity, if wires are overheated in a building cavity such as a wall, uh, the wires will get very hot and especially where they're near timber studs in the wall or other flammable material, they can easily start a fire. So we need some way to automatically stop the current in that circuit in the event that the uh, wires do get too hot. Um, we need property protection. Um, so as we just said, you know, uh, electricity can easily start fires. So if a fire starts in a building, it's going to quickly get out of control and uh, therefore we need some way to uh, protect that property. And we do that in fact with circuit breakers. We need to protect human life against electrocution. And um, that's a little bit different than a circuit breaker. This is a RCD or ELCB device. And let's go on now and have a quick look at what the difference is between those two. So RCD, residual current device, ELCB, earth leakage circuit breaker, they're essentially the same. The principle of operation, a little bit different. I'll be going through the principle of operation here in this uh, PowerPoint about RCDs. But the outcome for each is the same. That is, they are designed to uh, stop people from electrocution. Versus circuit breaker. Now, a circuit breaker is the first device that I'll talk about here. And uh, here's our common 240 volt GPO general power outlet. Uh, we have 240 volts coming in. It's connected to a 16 amp circuit breaker back at the uh, power distribution panel like you can see behind me here. And if we were to uh, plug in uh, two heaters, one heater by itself which is rated at 2400 watts, that is 10 amps of current it would draw from the mains, that's going to be okay. It's within the limits of that 16 amp circuit breaker. But if we plug in a second heater to the same GPO, then we'll have 20 amps of current and that would exceed the capacity of that circuit breaker and the circuit breaker would quickly trip and cut off the current to that um, circuit and protect those wires from being overheated and therefore protect the building against fire. So how does the circuit breaker function? Well, the circuit breaker uh, is a dual redundancy device. It has a electromagnetic uh, coil inside it. Now, the way this coil works, electromagnetism is proportional to current. So the more current that we put through this fine coil of wire, um, the more magnetism that will produce. And when we get enough magnetic field produced, that would pull in this normally close switch, it would pull this down towards the magnet and therefore break or cut the current flowing out through this line. And this line here would be the active line coming into our power point, our GPO. And of course that has to latch in place. Circuit breakers have a latching function and uh, once it trips, it will stay tripped until somebody delatches it and resets it. Now, if that electromagnetic arrangement was to fail, um, the engineers that designed these many years before thought about that and said, well, hey, why don't we put a bimetallic strip in these as well? And uh, bimetal is an alloy, which when it has enough current going through it and therefore heat generated, it will expand and twist. And uh, there's a switch which is built out of this bimetallic uh, material, 
and when we get enough current flowing through the uh, metal that will in fact open and then latch in the open position and again cut the current going through the circuit breaker. Now onto the ELCB and RCD. Um, here's our power box in the building and uh, here's our RCD. So the mains coming in from the street going through a residual current device and we have our active wire and our neutral wire. And these two wires, this is a very simple drawing I've got here. Go to a power point, there's our three wires. Bottom wire goes to ground. And here's our active terminal. Here's our neutral terminal. And got this girl over here, let's call her hairdryer girl. And she's using a hairdryer rated at 300 watts. And a 300 watt hairdryer would normally draw 1.25 amps of current from the 240 volt mains. But if that hairdryer was to develop a fault and some of the current, instead of going through the coil and back down through the neutral uh, side of the mains, so normally we would have 1.25 amps traveling into the hairdryer and 1.25 amps traveling out of the hairdryer. If something goes wrong with the hairdryer, and some current was to go down through the girl's body and down to ground, let's say we have 150 milliamps of leakage current here going to ground, that 150 milliamps we would subtract from the 1.25 amps to give us 1.1 amps now going back down the neutral wire. So this RCD, he's pretty smart, he's got um, three small coils of wire inside and one coil in the middle is a sensing coil and that's continually monitoring the current in the active wire and the current in the neutral wire and if there's an imbalance there it's going to give out a difference voltage and once that imbalance that we have between the two lines is more than 30 milliamps of current the ELCB will trip. And in this case, the uh, girl with the hairdryer would be saved because that 150 milliamps of uh, leakage, that would well and truly have caused the uh, imbalance to more than 30 milliamps and trip the ELCB. Now, in domestic situations, uh, ELCBs trip at 30 milliamps and they trip within 30 milliseconds. In hospital situation, uh, I think I'm correct here saying that they trip at 5 milliamps and 30 milliseconds. Uh, slightly different there and you'd have to check the AS3000 uh, regulations to see if that's current. All right, so moving on. What happened? Summary, 300 watt hairdryer, normally drawing 1.25 amps of current. Uh, in a fault condition though, we have 150 milliamps, which is 0.15 amps of current flowing back through the girl's body to ground. 1.25 amps minus the 0.15 leaves 1.1 amps of uh, current going back to the board. ELCB sees that difference and trips because of that difference. So here's a real situation where we've got the RCD protected board with active and neutral and then of course following the RCD we have our circuit breaker. Remember the circuit breaker protects property against overheated cables causing fire. The RCD protects lives. So the um, RCD followed by the circuit breaker and here we've got a washing machine. Here I am using the washing machine doing some washing and normally I've got the current going through the washing machine uh, equal current coming in to what's going back out again. But if the washing machine develops a fault, the fault current would be going down through my body, down to ground. And as soon as we get an imbalance here of 30 milliamps or more, 30 milliseconds and the RCD trips and therefore smiles all around, uh, I guess I'm protected. Otherwise I would have possibly been killed by electrocution. And circuit breakers. Circuit breakers go to not 
one power point, but normally more than one power point in a daisy chain configuration. We might have several GPOs in parallel. Um, the number of uh, GPOs, which is serviced by a circuit breaker, you can see in the AS3000, depends on a few things. So knowing a little bit of maths here, which is um, power in a circuit is equal to the voltage times the current flowing in that circuit, we can rearrange that equation to find that the current is equal to the power divided by the voltage. So earlier in one of the slides, we had some heaters that were 2,400 watts, and we had 240 volts, of course, supplying those heaters. And that's where I got that 10 amps from, just from that little bit of maths there. So moving on from that, let's say that we've got our circuit breaker, and we've got bedroom, TV room, kitchen, of course, numerous power points in different rooms in the house. And things that are being used on those power points are going to add together to make a total loading. And of course, that circuit breaker is rated at 16 amps. Now, if I've got an electric jug at 2 kilowatts, a toaster at 1.4 kilowatts, a TV at 200 watts, and a radio at 10 watts, the question is, can all of these appliances run at once or will they overload the breaker? So we have to add those together, and that would be uh, 3.4, 3.6, 3,610 watts. So we can run some maths on that value and see what the current will be and whether the breaker would be appropriate at that level of current. So let's see what that works out to be. Total power consumed, 3610 watts. Um, I equals P on V, 15.04 amps. Are we okay? Well, look, I'd say yes, but it's close to the trip point, so some trips may occur because there's tolerance in all components and there's tolerance in a circuit breaker. If it was 10% tolerance, that 16 amps would be 10% uh, of 16, 1.6 amps above and 1.6 amps below, so the trip range would be 14.4 amps to 17.6 amps. So you'd have to look at the manufacturer's specification to see what the particular tolerance was on that circuit breaker. Here we have uh, a little kid sitting on a, a floor. Now, first of all, if he's sitting on a wet floor and he's decided to play with some paper clips in this PowerPoint, it's a uh, house that was built in 2005. Certainly by the codes, it's going to be uh, essentially ELCB or RCD protected board. But in this case, the little kid has got his hands uh, paper clip in each hand and he's put the paper clips directly across the active and the neutral terminals and he's sitting he's sitting on a wet floor will he be protected will the circuit breaker trip and you really need to think about this question carefully will there be some leakage current or will he just be seen as a human toaster so to say across the active neutral terminals well the answer is that um, he will, in this case, oops, sorry, this is what happens when one doesn't use a mouse. Okay, using the laptop here and using fingers on the little whatever it's called. All right. Um, will he be saved or will he succumb to electrocution? So, in this case, he's sitting on the wet ground. In this case, current is going to travel from the active through the kid's body and down to ground. And there'll be a different current going back through the neutral line. The circuit breaker, the RCD, would trip and the kid would be saved. Now, what would happen... What would happen... Now, this is what happens here to the kid probably politically not correct here by calling him a fat kid, let's just say this robust kid sitting on the floor, he's got a resistance of about 30,000 ohms in his body and there's going to be a leakage current going down through his body to ground and in that case that's going to save his life. 
But if I go back a slide and we look at this again, and I say this time the ground is dry. He's sitting on floorboards or carpet. There's no moisture. There's no connection between the baby or the little boy and the ground. What's going to happen to him? Well, in this case, he's not going to be so lucky. In this case, if he just has one finger in the active, one finger perhaps in the neutral, and he's not connected in any way to ground, the circuit breaker, the RCD will not trip. Because as far as the RCD is concerned, this kid is just like a toaster or a TV, electric jug across the power point. So you've really got to think here, sometimes the wet floor will save our lives in this situation where we've got an RCD and uh, we come in contact to both sides of the mains. Here's the basic setup then for a property. We have the power lines with the active and neutral coming in. We have the RCD. We have several circuit breakers following the RCD. We have a neutral link in the power board which connects neutral to the ground in the house. And uh, we have several GPOs on different circuits. Again, um, it's regulated by the contents of the AS3000 and the current rules at the time. Um, although although uh, I didn't really want to do much about three phase in this short presentation, uh, it is important when you're first learning something about electrical, um, I think to say, because single phase, three phase, if I don't mention it here, you're going to go away saying, well, what's that all about? I've heard this term three phase. Well, single phase is where we just have two wires coming in perhaps to the house an active and a neutral. Three phase would be four wires coming into the house. Uh, power is generated from the power station um, with a rotating generator which has large coils of wire which give out um, electrical energy and they're spaced 120 degrees apart considering a 360 degrees rotation of that generator. And uh, across any of the two phases, we get 415 volts. And between any phase to neutral, we get 240 volts. So down the street, um, there's neutral. And phase one will go to one house. Phase two will go to another house. Phase three will go to another house. And the pattern would repeat itself to balance the load from the power station. And what I've gone on to show here is, why can this house still have its lights on after an electrical storm? And this house can have its lights on, but this house has lost its lights. And you see this quite often. And that's because uh, one of the phases has uh, dropped out at the local uh, power station or um, through one of the pole breakers up the street. And we've only got uh, power still coming down two phases instead of three. Just to summarise then, we looked at circuit breakers, which prevent um, overloading the wires and preventing fires. We looked at ELCB slash RCD, slightly different in how they work, but they serve the same purpose. They look at leakage current or current imbalance, and they save lives. Electrical power is transmitted using a three-phase three system, but not all properties need three-phase. And we should never, ever work alone on electrical circuits. And uh, if there was ever any reason to, and there shouldn't be, but you'd have to make sure that the mains was completely isolated from what you're going to work on. Um, and now that you know something about the fact that the board has RCD and followed by circuit breakers and then various GPOs around the, the property, you should be thinking, well, gee, I can't just turn off one particular circuit breaker and hope that's turned off the power to the whole installation because absolutely no. You have to be very careful and only licensed electricians uh, will ever work on electrical circuits in, in Australia. Okay, I hope that PowerPoint was useful. This PowerPoint was put together as a production for the OHS topic, um, which is part of the electrotechnology training syllabus. Thank you.